Hi, I'm Dr. Philip Palmer from Crime Practice, and I'm here to have a conversation with a friend of mine, Jeff Gladnick, from Great Dental Websites, which is an online marketing company, which I believe has 500 clients in five different countries. Welcome to Australia, Jeff. Oh, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Jeff, give us a bit of background on how you got into this business. Uh, I did uh, electrical and computer engineering in school, in uni, which is an odd path to take to run a marketing company for dentists. Sure. But there are eight dentists in my family and two more hygienists, and the pull of gravity for dentistry is very strong. And you can't get too far away before you're kind of sucked back in. And um, I was uh, working as an engineer in San Francisco. My dad wanted a new website, and I, uh, he called me, wanted some advice. We couldn't find him a good deal or a company that we thought could do it effectively. So I said I would make one for him. When my uncles got wind of the free website deal, uh, they wanted in too. Uh, so it ended up becoming a small business as they started to refer friends. And gradually it just built and built. And now we have about 35 staff, about 500, over 500 clients in five countries, and now here in Australia and New Zealand. Very good. I know that story about families that do dentistry. My family does the same. I've heard. I have a uh, brother-in-law and a, a niece who's a dentist. My son has the same complaint as you, a dental family. Anyway, I notice you have an accent and uh, you keep mispronouncing things. Tell us about what brought you to Australia. I'm trying my best. Um, so we, <laughs> a couple of years ago, we um, became aware of uh, the, the need for our services in the Australian market and it seemed almost like a mistake or, at first, or we, we didn't understand something. Because Americans think of Australia as a very developed country, a very proper country, and we figured that the, the, the state of dental marketing and the technology used would be right up there with what we do in the States. But uh, as we got here and looked around, it's, it's not. And it's not that, uh, you know, it, it just seems like the, the impetus for having to market yourself as a dentist hasn't quite happened to the degree it's happened in the U.S., where marketing is an absolute necessity um, to thrive um, in the industry today in the, in the United States. And so a lot of the techniques, um, processes, technology that we take for granted in the U.S. have never been really tried here. Um, and the competition we see um, on, for online marketing, where it's almost a blood sport in the United States, and when we bring on a new client and we're looking at you know their colleagues in that area and there's... It, we're like, this is going to be difficult and it's going to be expensive. We can do it, but we're setting expectations. In Australia, the, uh, we have you know, clients that come up first, second, third in, in Google, um, or I should say dentists, that don't have a website. And it's shocking, um, but you can kind of win on the podium right now in Australia uh, with very little effort. And so we saw that as a huge market opportunity for ourselves um, because Things, uh, as we understand, are changing here quite a bit, and marketing is becoming uh, more accepted and more necessary. Um, so we're really excited to bring our processes and technology to bear with this. We've been doing it for 10 years, and it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of green fields here. So we seem to think that we're the only market in the world that's, where it's overcrowded, um, where there's more dental schools than, there are, than there's a need for, there's mm -hmm. more graduates, there are still bringing dentists from overseas, there's corporatization. There's all these forces of competition. Can't be that bad in the United States, is it? I, I mean, you might be uh, happy or disappointed to know that's perhaps worse. Um, I think somebody told me it's a, where our rate of corporatization is not quite double, but it's, it's getting close. Um, marketing is, it, you might consider it obscene. There, the uh, there are practically there aren't no there are uh, there are some regula there are regulations but there's not many there's a lot uh, tighter of a path you have to walk through here um, reviews video testimonials outrageous promotions and like not quite used car salesman tactics but uh, some people do uh, we try to avoid that but there's it, it seems like uh, Australia is going through the same period that the United States went through in like 2005 or so where um, the, the state of online marketing is, is, is almost exactly the same here, where people are just starting to figure out what works. And I don't know if history will repeat itself, but it usually rhymes. And I expect you guys to go through a very similar transition that we did back then, where it became nice to have a website, and then it became necessary, and then you had to have a website, and then not only did you have to have a website, but it had to obey Google's rules. You had to market it properly, 
It had to be optimized for search engines. It had to work great on mobile. And if you don't do this, you're at a serious disadvantage. So aren't the Australian companies doing that already? Um, surprisingly not. And probably because there hasn't really been a market for it in the last couple, until very recently. So there's, I mean, there are hundreds of companies that do what we do in the United States, and some do it uh, well. And there are very few uh, companies that even uh, say that they specifically market to dentists or have a track record or the experience um, to be able to effectively do it here. So that was another thing that uh, was very attractive to us. There's a huge, we think, looming demand, and no one really set up to service it. So let me paint a picture for you for a dentist who's time poor. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've ever heard of a dentist who's time poor, but they all, every dentist seems to think they're time poor. And they only really want to spend one or two hours a month on their online marketing. What should they do in that one or two hours a month? Uh, yeah, I, I hear this almost always from all of our clients. There are very few dentists who wake up in the morning uh, excited about marketing. Um, we love those clients, but they're, they're rare. Um, the best thing that a dentist can do is probably record video of themselves. And it's very easy to do. It doesn't always even have to be professionally done if you have a little bit of time and quiet and talent and good lighting. Um, we, we send our, our clients little tripods that they can attach to their smartphones so they can try to uh, do this on their own. But, um, I mean, there's there are even dentists now that have become celebrities. You've seen the singing dentist yeah, guy with the, 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 the eyebrows. Exactly, yeah. I mean, he's getting on, you know, the Good Morning America and Good Day Australia or whatever yeah. um, you guys have here. And I, he, he's become an international celebrity, a dentist, yeah. um, for, for singing uh, on YouTube. <laughs> and I... I get a lot of pushback from our clients all the time. It says, well, that's not going to be me. They already have the singing dentist. I can't do that. That's right. Can't you do that for them? Well, we can't really be you. Um, and nobody online wants to, you know, connect socially on social media or develop like a sort of, um, you know, emotional relationship with, with your marketing company. They want you. And it's a very... Um, it's a very uh, emotional decision to, to find a dentist. You're going to be, you know, purchasing services from someone who's literally going to be sticking their hands in your mouth. Like, that's a very intimate uh, relationship. You're not buying bricks. Um, so you, you care about who they are, and you have to get to know them. And a lot of people didn't grow up going to their dad for 36 years like I have. They're afraid of the dentist. They might have a phobia, and they might have had a horrible experience with the previous dentist. And anything you can do to reassure them that, you're a nice person, it's going to be okay, um, and, you know, they don't have to be afraid, um, that really, video really breaks down those boundaries. So if, if they only had a little bit of time, record a couple of videos, um, ideally one for each of your services, and an intro video. So I'm Dr. Phil Palmer. People ask me about Invisalign, and how's it different from traditional orthodontics, and, well, here's what we do, and here are the benefits, and this is why you might want to consider it. And little things like that really help introduce you to your patients and so the dentist who doesn't want to do that, can you help them? Uh, yes, we have a service where we'll send uh, the videographer to the office, uh, sometimes with tequila, if necessary, <laughs> to kind of break down those boundaries. Um, sometimes that actually does really help. I'm sure. um, we have other liquors too. Um, in Colorado, there's other options available domestically. But, um, you know, we, it, it, a lot of dentists just find it difficult to get started. And if they can just record the first video, they find you know, the next 10 come very easily and naturally. Because you already know what to say. Sure. You already know what patients are asking and what their concerns are. It, it's just a little bit sometimes odd um, to film it on camera. And my dad was resistant against that too, and he said nobody will watch it. But a couple thousand people watch his videos. And what percentage of those people do you need to become patients for it to be worth it? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. What do you say to those dentists who think of marketing as a taboo? and think, well, we're, we're professionals. We shouldn't be in market. We shouldn't be marketing our services. I mean, I, I hear that, especially from um, uh, older dentists who've been in practice for a long time, and they are, they're not wrong. Um, at one time, they're absolutely correct. My, my dad became a dentist, and I think it was like 1979. You just hung the word dentist over your door, and you were done, yeah. um, and you prospered. But uh, times have changed, and... The dental schools have opened enrollment, and there's a lot of, as you said, foreign dentists and pressure from corporates coming in. And I don't, I don't think many dentists who are starting out today can get away with that um, anymore. And I don't, and I think a lot of established practices too. And you don't, 
you know, you, you don't have to advertise yourself like a used car salesman. Um, you can remain very professional and yeah. carry that message. Marketing is just sharing your story with the world and your community and, and your uh, target market. And how you do it is entirely up to you. You have total control over that. And it can be as professional or as sleazy as you want it to be. And we much prefer it's the former. Um, and that's what we like to work with. But um, that's totally up to the dentist. Tell me a little bit about how referrals work in current days and today's world. Yeah, because um, one thing that we hear from practices a lot is, well, I get all of my patients from referrals. Yeah. And you might. Um, but they probably aren't coming in the way you would think. And it's not that, you know, two people are sitting in a coffee shop and saying, oh, you know, I love Dr. Palmer. You need to go see him. And they say, great. Okay, and I'll pick it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> some, I'm sure, uh, qu do quite a bit. But they don't always just pick up the phone and immediately call you. They're going to research you. And oftentimes what we see now is these referrals happening online on social media and what we've kind of dubbed referral contests. So, well, like I live in a brand new community that was just built, so there's no trees. But uh, people will move to that community almost like every, at the end of every month now, like clockwork. And they ask the same questions. Who's your, who's your vet? Who's your pediatrician? Who's your dentist? And immediately, you know, five, 10, sometimes 20 people jump into this conversation and say, you should go to Dr. Smith, you should go to Dr. Jones, or you should go to Dr. Palmer. And it becomes this contest where the person will, and some people even embed the dentist's like Facebook uh, page or their website. If you don't have those things, you're at a disadvantage. If somebody can't quickly Google that name and find your practice, you're at a disadvantage and they'll move on to the next one in the list. And they don't always tell you this. And you, we encourage our clients to ask. Because they'll come in and say, well, you know, Steve, you know, Steve Johnson referred me, and so that's why I came in. And if the front desk doesn't ask any more questions, you'll never know that you won a contest. Um, and you're doing a good job, and your marketing and your online uh, presence and your website may have helped with that. Um, it wasn't just the referral. The referral helped, and the website assisted. That's interesting, because I was told recently I'm going uh, on up to Queensland for holidays, and I asked uh, a couple of friends where to go. And I got three different referrals of hotels. So what did I do? I looked them up on Google. I checked out the website. And frankly, whichever one looked best on the website was the one that I went to because I had three different yeah. referrals and it's the best website that wins. Yeah. And so that's, I guess, the, way, the same thing with dentists, although I never thought of it like that before. We, we all do that, we, especially with restaurants. Um, it's vital uh, that, you appear, that, that you appear as good as you actually are in the chair online. So how does Dr. Joe Public, there's a lot of marketing companies who are very good at marketing themselves. Mm -hmm. They promise you the world. They say you're going to come up top of the online. You're going to come up top on this. You get, we're going to make sure that you get, we're going to drive patients to your door. How do I assess which one I should go to if I'm Dr. Joe Public? Yeah, it, um, I, I'm aware that I'm in a profession kind of swimming with sharks um, to an extent. And I, I get this question quite a bit in the U.S. And it, you, and the, it's it's kind of like uh, bodybuilding, because um, I can tell you that you know I lift weights, and you could take a look at me and say, well, not much, but and <laughs> but I'm telling the truth. I can swear in court that I am a weightlifter, and I'm technically correct. And, but Arnold Schwarzenegger can say the same thing, and even at the his ripe age, yeah, he's still much better at it than me. And you kind of have to go through a similar process with marketing when they when someone says I do SEO. It's not uh, with the search engine optimization, the process of you know, trying to um, tune a website and optimize its content so it appears more highly in, in search queries. Um, that's not a box to check to say, do you do search engine optimization or not? It's not like air conditioning in a car, yes or no. There is a kind of a blend of art and science and process to this, and it's proportional to the amount of time spent. And the way that you really should be evaluating um, marketing companies as a dentist is you need to ask for referrals. You need to ask for reports that they get. It's shocking how little uh, reporting is given to dentists and they're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars and they have absolutely no idea what the company's doing. I didn't know I could ask for reports from a marketing oh, company. <laughs> so you can. What reports should I ask for? Um, you want to know, um, there's a couple, like if you think of a traditional sales funnel, there's a couple different stages and you want to know if you're doing, if you're paying for search engine optimization or some form of online marketing, um, where you're ranked, um, what search 
queries people are looking for. And that's not the end-all, be-all. Um, I know that some companies will say, we're going to get you to the top for 20 search terms, and they're going to pick the easiest possible terms. Don't fall for that. Um, but, you want to, but you should have some kind of reporting for your first for a dentist in Bondi Junction or your seventh, and this is kind of what we're doing about it. Okay. Um, how much traffic is coming to your website, and then how many of those people are filling out contact forms, and you, know, you can kind of see it, the, okay. the path going down the funnel. Okay. So if I wanted to assess how my marketing company is doing, I've got a website, I've got a marketing company, what should I, how should I assess that? I, I would talk what are the to, criteria? So, so I, w I would talk to your colleagues and find out and compare reports and see what they're getting. What are they paying? How many new patients they're getting? Because at the bottom, at the end of the day, the bottom line is how many patients you're getting. That's all that you know you care about uh, when you're purchasing a marketing service is the, the end result um, and what level of reporting it is. So if, if someone if they're just telling you we delivered you 10 new patients, you try to get specifics. What type of patients were they? Um, if they can give you the names or um, more detail, that's useful too. Um, and how they spent their time. If someone is very reluctant to tell you any information about how that time was spent, um, then they're probably putting that money into software. Yep. They're not paying. They're just flicking on the on switch and then they're they're headed to the pub um, or on a holiday and they're spending your money. Um, you want to know that somebody is looking after you well and spending your your time and your resources responsibly and thinking about the practice and doing it in a, in a customized way instead of just plugging you into a program that's a commodity and treating you like that. Thanks very much, Jeff. I've got a hairdresser that I'd like to send, to send you to because uh, we have a very similar style, but a few improvements you can make. Anyway, to, nice to see you. I'll have to look up their website to see <laughs> <if> you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.